up guys Barry Birch music here and today uh, I'm starting a new series called uh, Barrett reacts to your song or your music whatever something like that where you guys send me uh, your music and I give you my opinion on it uh, as an experienced music educator so this guy that's uh, one of my followers on TikTok, he sent me his uh, song and he asked for my opinion on it. Let's check it out. So yeah, his name is Bobby Burkhead. And it's a metal rock and roll kind of song. So that was a cool opening. I like that drum fill. Yeah. <laughs> So I like the riff. Uh, the riff is cool. You kept the drums, you know, uh, pretty chill. Uh, it sounds good though, you know. Uh, it's really tight. It's recorded very, very, very well. Recorded very, very well. So I like the lead guitar part too. The lead guitar part and the rhythm guitar uh, do what they're supposed to do, which is harmonize and complement each other so uh, here's where the verse starts right here an open door a guiding light to lead me through the pain out of this hell I've known so many years of crying out wanting something more so I one one thing I really really like the tone of your voice you got a really cool rock vocal uh, sound I don't know if I love the high what, what he's done is he's layered uh, you know a more in his register uh, typical baritone type melody and then he's also layered uh, a harmony part on top of that for the entire time now I like that I like the fact that it's like an octave or whatever right higher and you it sounds great all the pitch is great uh, I haven't heard any bad pitch pitchy areas really yet um, I think that that higher octave part needs to be mixed down so that it's more of just a texture, but you can't really tell it's there. A lot of really good production actually happens in the things that you don't even realize you're hearing, right? So, um, you know, you'll hear guys like Ozzy do this kind of stuff too. Uh, and, and it gives your voice that texture you're looking for. I just feel like maybe the mix of the higher octave is a little bit too much because it stands out and you can actually tell it's there. And really what you're looking for in this style of thing you're going for here is you're really looking for just that natural lead vocal like you're giving us in that lower area so that in the chorus you can go higher uh, in your melody and stuff. But uh, that, that second layer just needs to be lower in the mix in my opinion. It already is low in the mix, but I think if it was even lower, it would it would help complement the main vocal even more instead of compete with it. It seems that my time has come. I know it's gonna take a little piece of me to live my life without you. So that second half of the verse, that was beautiful, man. I mean, you've listened to a lot of rock. You know how to write rock, okay? The whole purpose of a verse is to lead you into a chorus, right? No matter what genre. But especially in rock music, if you can take half of that verse and the other half, and the second half of the verse really, or you can call that a pre-chorus, really. Whatever you want to call it, that second, that part before that first chorus needs to really just ramp you up to that chorus. And I love that thing you did in the melody, um, you know, da -da -da, you know, just those nice little dissonances that are really starting to tense things up and it's starting to drive you into that chorus. I really like that second half of that verse, man. It sounds awesome. Without you, I know it's gonna break little pieces of me. I 
like your chorus, man. I get what you're going for here, you know? So there's so much more than life. Like, I get it. It's very melodic. It's very, you know, it's, it's very strong. I think what's funny is this is really the part where you want most of that harmony to stand out in the mix, though, versus earlier you want the harmony to be more chill. Uh, in the chorus, you want that harmony to really be standing out, in my opinion. Of course, that's something you experiment with, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if you listen to that. But I feel like that part really does, could use some extra oomph because it's the chorus, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and so, you know, some harmony on that guy would, wouldn't be a bad thing. So you're going back and forth between a C minor and that A flat major, which sounds awesome. I love that chord progression. Now, a little note on the drum part here, just because I am a drummer, and so this is the kind of stuff I hear the most. I love this little out break you got after the chorus here. But at the end of those at the end of those phrases, you definitely, as a drummer, usually want to copy those sorts of hits at the end of phrases. So the but then you do a different hit in the second half, which you could have you could have copied with the drums as well on that one part. All right, so I had to switch to iTunes because the stupid Google thing wouldn't let me keep pausing and playing. But uh, yeah, you want to copy those hits right there and then right here. That is such a cool guitar part, but you can do that. Maybe not every single one of them, but as a drummer, you definitely typically want to copy stuff like that. Or, or compliment it in some way. Um. Right there for sure. Yeah. Now, here's what I found interesting about their song. After your outbreak sort of deal, you went back into what I'm calling the chorus. So here's the thing. I think uh, one thing that would, that would help you with this song, this song is excellent, by the way, but one thing that will help you with it is do another verse and then do another chorus and then go into the outbreak and then go into uh, the chorus for the end. Because typically intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, right? So you're kind of doing the bridge early, in other words. You definitely don't want to get rid of verse 2. Verse 2 helps build out a song. And of course, you don't have to always follow that typical um, structure, but you want your song to still continue to build gradually and towards the end. That might not be always the structure of the song, but uh, that's, that's how it is a lot of times with rock. So you went back into the chorus here. So much more By the way, when you go into a chorus again, that's when you can start adding even more elements to it, typically. You don't have to, but something to think about. Like, maybe uh, even in the background, like some... Ah, like some ahs or oohs or whatever syllable you want to use. I promise, man, it sounds cheesy. But if you record some of that stuff and put it low in the mix and just have all of that sort of... It's crazy in production how much vocal things are going on typically in a recording most of the time. And you don't hear a lot of it. You just hear the main vocal. And that's the trick, right? You still want to hear the main vocal, but you also want the background vocals. You also want the background harmonies. You also want the oohs and the ahs to give it that nice, really full kind of produced texture. Unless you don't want it that produced. And if you don't want it that produced, then what you did is great because... The vocal itself sounds excellent.
So the second time you went into the chorus, you came out of it with the intro thing. That's the intro thing. An evil voice discouraging, telling me. So this is another verse. I'll fall into the pits of hell for all the wrongs that I have done in my way. Here's the thing, though. Did you gain anything by putting another chorus before the verse? No, not really. All right. Not really. Not really. Wicked life. I will not listen now. I know it's gonna take a little bit. Especially since this part right here builds into the chorus so beautifully. This is the coolest part of the whole song, melodically. This right here. It's of me. To live my life without you. Second half of it. I know it's gonna break down pieces of pain. Yeah. But I'm willing I love that. to let this go. Cause there's so much more to life than holding on to fear and rage. Yeah, there's so So you did a double course at the end. That's that's typical, you know? That's typical. The only problem I have with this song, mainly, is just the structure of it. Now, if you like the structure of it, cool. It's your song, right? This is just my opinion. I think it should go intro, verse, and then if you're calling that second half or pre-chorus, fine. The pre-chorus is the coolest part of the song. You can either call it a pre-chorus or the second half of the verse. You can think of it one of the other ways chorus then that outro thing is cool but you might want to save the outro thing for another verse another pre-chorus another chorus then the outro uh sort of bridge break then you go back into the two choruses so you don't put a second chorus before a second verse in my opinion you didn't gain anything by doing that and your bridge part was way too early so it's like you just want to take some of these pieces and just move them around funny enough i could actually do it in audacity <laughs> Okay, so I love that vocal change you did in the second uh, the, the second time through the chorus in the end. Because you need to do stuff like that as a vocalist, right? It's boring if you just sing it the same way, especially on the second time on a second chorus. Uh, so, or third chorus. You know what I mean. The, the, the double up chorus at the end. I love that vocal thing at the end. You got really nice vocals, man. Been holding on to me. Okay, no offense, but what I can't stand is a bad ending. You fade it out. Here's my problem with fading out. You have a really solid ending. You want to know what it is? This right here. No, not that. This. This is an ending, bro. And you can either end it there or you can end it on the dang. Or you can end it there. I mean, there's so many different places in that rhythm you could end the song. I mean, that would be, you know, cheesy ish to end it there. Uh, but, you know, honestly, man, I would end it on that riff myself. Because, you know, the fa a fade out works well if. You're the Eagles playing Hotel California and you, you're playing one of the badass, most badass solos of all time, right? The reason why fade outs worked in the 80s is because musicians were like jamming their asses off while doing the fade off. And so that's what you have to realize is, and this is, you know, typically how it is. If you're going to do a fade off, it's usually because you're jamming, right? And you're just kind of jamming the song out. Uh, you wouldn't, you're not really jamming for this. You're just, it's almost like stopping the song and you're just like, wait, that was the end? You don't want an ending like that, okay? You don't want an ending like that. So you could have just gone, uh, that little vocal thing you did. Oh, yeah. Wait, been holding on to fear and rage. So much more to life 
Then blah 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 I don't know, something like that, okay? That's just an idea. So yeah. Alright guys, so this is a new series. If you want me to uh you know give my opinion, whatever, on your music, your song, send it to me. Emails in the description insane drummer89 at gmail.com. Let's keep this going. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.